Hi everybody, here we are again back in my workshop, it's four o'clock on a Thursday um, and today we are going to be looking at making one of our uh, Nutcracker figures. We'll have a little bit of a, a talk about the history of, of Nutcrackers and the, um, some of the mythologies and, uh, behind them, the lovely stories that you get with Nutcrackers. Um, but we're going to make some of the, the key bits um, today, some of the, the main bits, the legs, the arms, the, the body, all those sorts of things. And then on Tuesday next week we're going to look at some of the decorations behind it and how we get the whole thing together. Finley's behind the camera, um, he's in the middle of, uh, of two shifts so he's going to have to dart off around about uh, sort of 20 to, to, uh, to 5 so we've got Charlie then taking over so we've got plenty of people around today um, to help us out. So we'll have a look at our, our figures here, I just brought three of them out for you, a couple of different sizes. Um, just so you can see better what the sort you know what sort of thing that we're going to be making. They're very colourful figures. The, the story behind Nutcrackers is these um, figures are supposed to stand on the mantle and keep the the owners safe from all the nasties that are out there. And you'll always find Nutcrackers sort of gnashing their teeth. So you'll see these teeth exposed, bit of a glare. They're keeping you safe, so they're not supposed to be frightening. They're supposed to be there to guard you and give the the household some good luck. Um, so that's that's the story that I like behind them and when I give them, um, tell people. All right, for questions, Finn, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so it's a lovely story behind them. They're different to smokers where um, uh, nutcrackers tend to stand on the mantle um, and the run up to the advent to Christmas where you smokers do the same job, good luck, but they're supposed to go after Christmas. So they're the, um, the, the incense, again, does the same thing, keeps all the baddies away from you. Um, so two different parts of Christmas, really. Um, I've got soldiers here, all drummer boys, a couple of different drummers um, uh, here, and we've got a guard. But you could basically do anything. I've picked soldiers, but in the past I've done kings and queens, um, all sorts of different things. We're going to do the basic. Um, now, I've sent already Lily. Um, it's got um, some pictures, so the line drawings of what we're going to be doing. That's going to include all the, the measurements for you. Um, so you can start building this pretty much as soon as we finish here. Don't wait for the next session. Start building, um, get all your timber cut out, and then we can carry on on Tuesday. So let's have a look where we are. So me personally, I prefer my nutcrackers on a square base. The soldier here is a round base. I'm going to show you both in a minute, but that's that's the only bit of square work. If you want to do everything on the lathe, do everything on the lathe. It makes no difference. Um, I brought my drill over because we're going to do a little bit of drilling today so, so we don't have to move around too much. We're just a quick flip back and forward. As soon as you've finished, I'm doing this demonstration again for a group in, uh, in Mid Wells, Pro Valley Turners. So we're going to be um, doing a, a similar demonstration for them, except tonight we're going to be doing it from start to finish. We get two sessions now, so we'll get today and Tuesday. But look what we've got to do. We've got to do the base. We've got to do the feet, which is a bit of split turning, so that's quite nice. Obviously the, the legs there, the body, the head, the hat, the um, peak, and then the arms. And we'll look at bending the arms, putting a bit of a, a bend in as well, which will depend on what you want to, you know, what sort of uh, pose you want your figure in. We've got a lot to do. If we don't get it all done, that doesn't matter. We've got another day to do it. If we don't get it all done on Tuesday, we'll move over into Thursday as well. That's the beauty of these. We can keep going for as long as we need to. So let's start at the bottom. Let me show you two bases. I've got, well in fact, let me show you three. And I've got all my wood blanks are down here. I've cut and prepped and everything already. That's what I've been doing, busy myself with this morning. So I've got three bases. So we'll start, so a round one. So a round base, like you're making a trophy base. Basically what I've done, cut it out on the bandsaw, um, held the exterior um, on a big set of jaws, and then I've made a recess in the bottom. The, use the seed jaws then to expand into it nice decorated edge and two holes in the top they're going to be our foundation there where everything um, actually uh, starts being held to so this is something that i done yesterday this is just a piece of pine literally just cut it square so use the square marks it cut it a very very rough sanding and there's a nice big base there um, but i've already prepped a load of these up so this is a piece of tulip wood um, and I've routed an edge, so cut square, sanded, routed an edge. Um, it's still a little bit rough, we still need to um, do a little bit of sanding on that, but that's the ones that I prefer, the ones that I tend to go, go with, and I've got a bundle load. That's what we're going to use today. Now, in case you're wondering about the hole sizes, um, I've 
always use, well I, I say always use, I tend to use jigs to repeat the process. So I've got two jigs here. Um, you'll see um, just two hole size or distances, center distances. Okay, that one's marked as top and this one's marked as bottom. So this is the feet and the bottom of the body. That's the distance. So I can put that up against my, my base. I can move over to the drill and I can drill accurately. Um, so I know the spacing in the base will be the same as the spacing in the bottom of the, um, the main body. Because if you get them different, your, your soldier's going to look as though he's had a few too many beers and it'll be falling over. So we need to get everything nice and straight. Okay, so that's already done. Those um, jigs or just little templates I can use over and over and over again. Doesn't matter. Um, one thing about dimensions, um, this is my size, this is my dimensions, this is what I've come up with. You don't have to stick to it. If you want to do something a bit bigger, a bit, um, bit fatter, a bit thinner, longer, whatever, it's up to you. Do what you want. Um, Lenny, like I said, has got the, the plans. I could say that it was just a quick sketch I've done this morning, but I didn't. I've done these a few years ago. But there's a couple of uh, sketches there with the, the various dimensions and a suggestion for a face, uh, that sort of thing. Everything that's painted here um, has been done by myself, um, uh, including the facial features. So um, have fun with that. Get the family in, in, uh, involved. Um, enjoy what we're doing. Um, but yeah, airbrushing techniques here, aerosols here, um, chestnut ebonizing black lacquer here, um, and just hand paints for the, for the features. So. Are we all right, Finn? Have we got connection issues? I think we might have a few issues with connection. Okay. It's probably um, upload speeds. Upload speeds are up and down. On Tuesday, it was, it was lovely. Now, don't worry. If, if the connection is a little bit rough, we will upload the raw copy tomorrow so you'll get a really good crystal clear image. So if you're having a few issues now, don't worry. It'll be available from tomorrow morning for you to see. Okay, so don't panic. Okay, so I'm going to carry on as if we've got um, a really good image. Okay, so where are we going? So we've done the base. So I've done the base, I've drilled the base. That's already done. We don't have to worry about that. Um, like I say, if you want to turn, turn. So that's where we're going to start. Where are, we, where are we going to put this? Let's just pop it down there for the minute. Next thing, let's do some feet. So the feet, we're going to use... I've got a bit of lime here, but you can use anything. It doesn't really matter what the timber is. It's going to be painted over. Um, this is a piece of lime. It, it cuts beautifully, but we're going to do a little bit of split turning. <laughs> split turning basically is two strips of timber. Um, I've used a PVA glue um, up the seam with a little bit of card or blotting paper in between. So we're going to turn, then we're going to split it, and that means we'll have two perfect, um, perfectly same um, feet uh, ready to go. Um, just got a quick question from Ben. Uh, he was just saying, do you know if there are any plans to add 25 millimeter post robust tool rests? Um, I, I looked yesterday. So because of all of your comments, um, we're looking at doing the robust tool rests, looking at doing the robust tool rests for the smaller craft machines that have the 16 mil tool posts. Unfortunately, there aren't 25 mil tool posts um, out there from Robust, so no, <coughs> no, we can't do. <coughs> we can't do that, I'm afraid. <coughs> so sorry about that. That's out of our control, that one. <coughs> yeah, no, I was looking at that. It's the only size we can't get. Right. Maybe because Robust is an American company. So inch is their go-to, or imperial is their go-to, really. So look, what I've done, I've just put a hole dead center. I'm not pushing hard with my bradle, otherwise I'll split the, um, the piece of split turning in two. So we're gonna use, because of that, I'm not gonna use a single point center, we're gonna use a ring center instead. How are we doing? Any improvement on the, um, the image yet? Or... Yeah, yeah, we have quite a few comments saying it's all right now. Okay, good, good. I think we're still trying to get the better image or the better video tomorrow. Um, it's always worth it if we've got that good raw image, we might as well use it. Or video, sorry. So, split turning, two pieces stuck together, a bit of card in the middle. So let's get that turn. I'm gonna turn, imagine a peanut shape. That's what I'm gonna do, slightly bigger on one side. 
two ring centers. That means that it's not going to wedge that piece open. There we are. And we're going to drill these straight away afterwards. So I'm going to go quick, pretty quick here, about 2,000 revs. Slurp the team while they're being moved. All right there, Finn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's have a go. About 2,000 revs, I reckon. So just using the small bowl gouge, little six mil bowl gouge, to rough down and then skew cut. And then a very rough peanut shape. Um, short question from Paul. You're saying, can you turn nylon on a wood lathe? Yeah. Oh yeah, so um, my little sanding discs are nylon sanding discs, and I turn those on the lathe from old chopping boards. Um, and it turns really well. Just be a little bit careful, it's a bit stringy, so don't get caught up in it. Keep the shavings clear. So a little bit smaller toward the toe. So just using the spindle gouge, just getting the shape that I want. I'm, a, I'm about there, I think. We'll do a little bit of sanding as we go. I'm not going to do a huge amount because that'll burn up our time a bit too much. So let's just do a little bit of sanding, maybe a 150 and a 240. So, pull rest out of the way. There we go, a little bit of 240. This is going to be painted black. This is a boot, so I'm not too worried about going really, really fine. In fact, I don't want to go too fine. I want the paint to adhere to it nicely. There we are, there's our two feet. Okay, the good thing with split turning, you see, you only have to turn once, and then I'll show you. This, in fact, let's just take a little bit more off of that, just so I don't have to tidy up too much. Get the old skew chisel out. Just helps the cleaning up afterwards. You don't have to do too much then, you see. So, in terms of splitting them, just be a little bit careful, or be very careful. Um, I'll use my sanding block, gives me a nice surface to work on. And I'll just use a little craft knife, or in this case, a, a carving knife, and we're just gonna split down the line. Okay, and you have your two feet. We've got to, we've got to nip off or sand off the edges. We'll sand it off properly in a minute, but just to show you how well that works, just nip that off, sand them back in a minute. But now we're gonna drill a little hole, or big hole rather, 20 mil, in both these uh, large areas. That's gonna be so you can take the, um, so we can take the, the legs. So let's just do that now quickly. Finn, do you want to just pan around to the drill? A uh, 20 millimeter drill bit, then we're going to use a six as well. I'm going to roughly center where I want this drill bit to start. 
and I'm going to set the depth as well because I want them both drilled at the same depth. Don't want to go through. Could you just repeat um, where the plans are for this project? Um, Lily, uh, the plans going to be put up on the um, on the feed. I think um, Lily might have put them up earlier on. Right. Now, I'm holding that with my fingers only because I'm not making a big, big hole there, okay? So, of course, if you at all worried that they're going to move, then clamp it in some way. Now, we're going to go through there with 6 mil. You've seen, if you've seen me do the smokers, you'll understand what I'm doing here. 6 mil holds everything together with, we use um, dowel. So, 6 mil all the way through. There we are, there's the two holes. Okay, six mil all the way through, and this little flat, that's a little landing for the legs in a moment. Okay, Finn, back to the back to the lathe. And we'll clean those up in a minute. And we put it all together. Well, I'll leave you to clean it up because now we're gonna start building. First thing to build will be the feet. Just coming up to 20 minutes in. Lovely. So, oh, let's get my little hammer a minute. A little bit like Santa's workshop now. You start tapping things together. Um, I'll take this apart and take away the waste at some point, but you don't need to see me do that. So into our hole. So, ignoring the fact we've got waste to take away from the feet still, that's where we start, okay? That one's not going in for some reason. Have I missed? Oh, I missed. I missed the hole. That's better. That's better. There we are. Right, so now we've got two feet on a platform. We need the legs. So, we're going to turn the legs bottom to 20 mil so they fit nicely in inside those feet. So... The legs need to be drilled out both sides. I've done that already. Okay, so we've got a hole on both sides because they need to be connected to the feet and they need to be connected to the bottom of the body as well. Uh, get rid of our platform, back to a tool rest. And um, we'll change our centers now. We're gonna go away from the ring centers and we need something that's gonna fit into those holes we've drilled. So we're gonna go to a light pull drive and a single pointed center. Okay, you'll be familiar with these. Use them a few times. So light pull drive, single pointed center, and then this is a piece of tulip wood. Sort of in the, I think it's in the poplar family. My tool rest is just long enough for this one. Nice and quick again, same speed as the feet. <coughs> and we're gonna, gonna use the skew chisel. And you can put a little bit of decoration here. Um, the nutcrackers I've got behind me have got little knees on. Remember, when you're using friction drives, every time it slows down, just give it a little bit of a tweak. So it's just a few little roughing cuts with the skew, backwards and forwards, 45 degrees when you're cutting, bevel rubbing. And now we can start thinking on some finishing cuts. So 
so 20 mil remember we want the foot so I'm going to just measure that so a set of calipers and because I've got the drill bit here if I measure the drill bit and then we'll make it fit the drill bit there we go that's it So a nice chunky thigh, remember this is a soldier. And we're gonna taper down to the shin. And then let's do, let's do a little bit of decoration, something that we can paint effectively later on. So I tend to put a little bead in here because we can add some some colour and certainly the boot at the shin end wants to be, well in this case it's going to be black. So we'll just do a couple of little beads. Bit of a big skew for this but there we are. And think about your painting when you're doing these. You want to create areas that you can cut into and get good crisp lines. There we are. And we've got a question from Tom. He was just saying, what angle have you got your skew? Uh, so 25 degrees is the ground angle on that one, Tom. There we are, I think that should be about right. Looks about right. I'll make it a little, a little wee bit smaller. And then we'll just trim up the ends. And we'll do it the second one. Twenty-five degrees ground angle on this skew. They're not all the same, but most of the German skews I got are. So there's one, one leg. Okay, we're going to do another one to replicate that one. So another piece of tulip, drill both sides. I'll do the same thing. If in case you were missing the roughing down with the skew. It's just a forward and back motion. Um, well, a question here from James. He was just saying, um, in your opinion, what's the advantage of um, the tapered Conway skew? The main advantage with one of these skews is the balance. Because we've taken a lot of the material away. I mean, they're fashioned on the, the, the old hand-forged German skews. And what they were with a hand-forged German skew, um, which I've got here, one of these. These are beaten with a hammer, so that bit of metal there gets laid out. So you still get the same um, weight of metal in the end here as you have here. With a conventional skew, which is the same thickness all the way up, um, it's, it's, it's very, very heavy um, to, to wield around. But here, from that amount of steel, we can get that width of blade. So it becomes nice and balanced. Certainly once you go to the 12 mil um, skew, it's, it's beautiful to use, beautiful to handle. Now, as soon as you get a, a chisel that's nice and light, you then tend to hold it less aggressively. So then suddenly your feeling comes back you can actually feel the bevel rubbing the um, the skew, or the timber, sorry. So that means then you're gonna have better response, understand where the bevel is. You're not gonna get those grabs because the bevel's not rubbing. Um, so much better. Take your time, <coughs> take your time measuring these up together. Um, I'm just sort of rushing into this so we can do a few of the jobs today. Twenty-five, sorry, twenty mil. <coughs> Okay, 
you know, I wish I could sort of, <clears throat> in a face-to-face -face demonstration, I can hand the chisels around so you can see the difference. But obviously on this sort of thing, I can't. But um, yeah, the feel is so different in the hand. The response that you get is different. Right, now I'm just going to have a look and see how close we are. We're not too bad, a little bit thicker on the one that I'm just doing, so I'm going to take a little bit more off the thigh, but then we're about there, really. There we are. Trim up the end, make sure they're the same length, so we don't have a drunken soldier. And obviously I would sand normally. <coughs> we're not going to sand this one. There we are, they're the same length. So let's do another bit of assembly. Um, we've got a, a big question here from Tim. He was just saying, um, so the worm drive holder in cross is cross drill and tap to allow the, wor the worm screw to be changed. Do you think it would be possible to machine the center um, of the axe mixer at centered chuck the same way to allow the use of a worm screw? Um, the center hole is already the right size. Did you get all that? I'm going to have to digest that one tomorrow and uh, <laughs> announce that online um, because I didn't quite understand that. Um, there we are. We got a pair of legs. We got a pair of legs. I might just do it's a little bit the left hand side. Well, sorry, Finn, I'm just moving that. I might just in a minute take that one apart and just, <clears throat> just take a shaving off of the left hand one there just to make him a little bit. Uh, more even but there we are we're starting to get the the body made or we're not starting to get the body made we've got the legs and the feet made there so moving on to the body just Back. go on just quickly um dave was just asking he was just saying he's struggling to sharpen his skew um would you do a demo at some point in the future yeah yeah no problem i mean the, in terms of shoe, skew sharpening uh if we if we ignore all the jigs that are out there because the Tormet jig, the um, the woodcut jig, um, all of those jigs that, that I've used before work well with that skew. Do, ignore the fact that it's got a splay on it. That doesn't make any difference to the jigs. It still works. Um, but every now and again, just give it a, a sharpen with your diamond file. I'm just trying to find my diamond file. Um, so once you've got your first ground angle, then just take your diamond file, whatever make it the diamond file is. I tend to go fine. And every now and again, don't wait for it to go blunt, just keep it sharp. And you'll find you'll have to do far less mechanical sharpening to it. <clears throat> and we've got a question here from Lynn. She was just saying um, she doesn't have the, the light pull drive or a revolving drive. Um, she was asking if uh, she should get them. Um, or what would be, if not, what would be uh, the best ones to get for a beginner? Sure. Beginner, so your lathe will come probably with a four prong drive and a single pointed center. So a single pointed center is really, really useful. I would probably go, I, I, you, I mean, if you've seen, I don't know you haven't, you've seen a few of these demos, you'll see me using the light pull drive a lot. So basically anything that's got a hole up it already, um, the light pull drive is really good for, because then we can turn around the hole. We can base everything around that center point so we don't lose center basically. Um, so, yeah, that's that's why I use it so often. Um, so I would, uh, yeah, I would. If you're doing this sort of work, I would certainly consider um, getting one. We've got uh, we've got Charlie coming to relieve Finn. Um, one thing I haven't spoken about yet. We're going to do a body of our soldier without the nutcracker movement, and we'll explain in a second as we get going. Let's just do our transition. Goodbye, Finn. Hello, Charlie. All right, cheers. All right, thanks, everyone. See you, Charlie. See you, Finn. <laughs> See you, Finn. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> okay, so let's do our body and explain what I meant about the mechanism. So what I've got here, another piece of tuna. I just find tuna easy to get. Um, I do a lot of these out of uh, lime as well. Um, I've got a blank end this side, and I'm using a pro drive here to drive. This side I've drilled another six mil hole. This is going to accept the head. 
Okay, so I've got two bodies to show you now. And if, you're, if you've never done one of these before, or if you've just started turning that sort of stuff, don't put a mechanism in it, okay? So you're gonna make a body like this. Okay, nice and simple, hole at the top, two holes at the bottom, arm holes, that's it. Nice and simple. Now, Finn, uh, Charlie, I'm getting confused now. Charlie, just pan up a little bit. Let's go over to the finished nutcrackers. So this one and this one are both solid bodies, no nutcracker movement, okay? This one has a nutcracker movement, and you'll see when I move. Okay, so the nuts are gonna be cracked in the mouth. This isn't, this is a decorative version, otherwise I'd make that much bigger and also strengthen this mechanism. But that's where you get the nutcracker bit from, okay? To do that though, you have to create a holder to do that. And that's quite a complex cut. Um, I use a, um, a router box um, and route that slot in. Now, Charlie, I'm gonna have the router box there. Will you just reposition the camera to show everybody? We'll just explain what we're talking about. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to do this if you've never made one of these before. Let's make this, just make them solid bodies and much easier. That's a router box, so back a bit further, mate. It's got a non-slip top, so this is a piece of shower wall. Okay, so this uh, high density, a uh, high density fiber board. What I've done on there is put a, a slot in here to take a 30 mil guide bush and a router, and then we use kitchen worktop cutters they're 12 mil or half inch cutters um, straight cutters because they're long they're long enough to do the job within that box I've made two positions okay one to um, to cut out the slot on the back okay one to cut the slot out on the back and one to cut the, cut the slot out on the top in turn that body what we're about to turn gets held in a little cradle like this that cradle is then positioned in the box route through turn the box over next position route through okay nice and simple the bit that's not so simple is, is creating the box in the first place um, and also we have to be fairly confined whatever we turn in terms of a body needs to fit in the box okay it needs to fit in the box so that's where our only sort of um our only sort of limitation is i suppose when it comes to making these whatever i make i have to make to fit in that box that's why making a solid body version is a, gives you a little bit more freedom to do whatever size whatever shape you wish okay i'm going to make it fit the box so i'm going to make one of those so I'm going to make a solid body. Let's not worry about the slot, not worry about router box. For anybody that does want to make a router box, I will post the dimensions tomorrow and some drawings. But for now, we're going to make a body. So let's make it fit my box. I'm just going to open that box up. because as well as routing, that box is also used for drilling accurately. So, one side comes off, does come off, and again, I'm using little dowels as pegs to keep it central. So I wanna make my piece to only fit in there now. Just gonna take a little measurement, and then I'm gonna set my calipers. So I'm at 68 mil, set of calipers to 68 mil. And we're gonna try it a couple of times. Now I'm gonna to go to a roughing gouge now, just because that's a much bigger piece. This new chisel will just take a bit too long.
let's get the size right first. So passing torn calipers. And we'll do a couple of marks. Up and gouge again. Right now, I can use the skew, so raise the tool rest. And this is going to give us our best possible finish. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to stop the lathe. going to check will it fit a little bit tight up this side so I'm going to take a skim off of that and then we'll be there and then we can shape so back to position a little bit of a skim done um what depth of cut would you recommend for a bandsaw I would go around about 200 mil. If you're looking for a bandsaw for turning, about 200, it's about eight inches is, is quite nice. Gives you a good scope then. Let's do a belt loop. Nice and thin. Nice and thin, what I mean is, our soldier's a fit soldier. So we're gonna give them a nice, Physique, I don't want him too tubby. tidy up the top edge. Again, we can do that with a skew. We don't want to go too, don't take too much off here. I want to make sure it's going to fit in the box again. And a little chamfer. Now, without having that chamfer, let me show you what you get. Again, we'll stop that. So without the chamfer, this little section here, see that chamfer? has no chance of having a curve on it. If this comes up straight, so will the head. So we want to have a, a nice curve. So I've got a little chamfer in to do that. That's what that is there. Now, let me just check the length, because again, it has to fit in the box. So I need to have that 100 mil, no more. And I think we should be there. Um, what paints would you recommend for these nutcrackers? So um, I'm using a mixture, really. I, I use a lot of aerosol, but I also use um, airbrush paint. So, well, not airbrush, but chestnut spirit stain I use a lot of. But any of the, um, the, the stains out there now, I know Hampshire Sheen do a good range of real earthy colours uh, as well. These are um, uh, uh, rust <coughs> excuse me, rust-oleum colours. These are hand-painted rust colours here, um, and clear lacquer for the head. But all of those sort of um, toy safe paints are good. Um, you know, they look too toy-like not to be. I think that's that's the reason that I like to use toy safe paints. Um, spirit stains, are the, the, you know, there's not a surface paint, so I'm not too worried about those. They actually soak into the timber. It's not, not something that can chip off. Um, there, that's now in there. Now what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna put the lid back on, and this is going to be my guide, really. So top on top. Clip together. Put these screws back in. Just to hold it whilst we drill. Because now that's given me my positions for drilling. So if I was going to do um, the mechanism, I've got the, the drill holes up here knowing that I'm routing through. So that's why the top holes are a little bit wider than the bottom ones. 
The bottom holes there are going to be the same as the ones on the base, so that's going to align nicely. But then also the arm holes, we're going to drill it all together. And for that, instead of using a lip and spur a bit, I'm going to use a, um, a normal twist drill at 6 mil. There we go. Back to the drill then, Charlie. I'm going to wind the mechanism down a bit. Go to our 6 mil. Now if you're not making a mechanism, then you don't have to drill all the way through to the other side. If you are, then you will need to do that. So 6 mil, I think that one is a 6 mil. Looks like a 6 mil. It's quite a long 6 mil. I, I have these longer drill bits in 6 mil just to go all the way through <coughs> the box. There we are. So. so let's do the holes for the arm first. Could you drill these holes before turning? I don't see why not. Yeah, I don't see why not. So we would normally drill there for the mechanism. I'm not putting a mechanism in this one, so I've already got my pre-drilled center hole, which is absolutely fine. Right, so the leg holes. Are diagrams available for the routing and drilling jigs? Um, I'll have, yes, I have. I will get them um, posted tomorrow for you guys. Um, we'll get them up tomorrow. I will work with Lily tomorrow morning. We'll get them out there for you. So there we are. We'll just take the lid off. Where will they be posted? We'll put them up on Facebook uh, unless Lily says different. Lily's in charge of all that, so tell me where we're going to put them. Um, Lily, I'm guessing we're going to put them on Facebook. There we are. Arm holes and the two leg holes there. This can be sanded now. Um, sanded or you can put it back between centers, tail stock end, um, and just clean that up if you want to. So again, we'll carry on building. So we need a couple of dowels in there. Obviously sand up, you want to get it sanded nicely. And we'll go a couple of medium size. I made that quite deep, those. Got 15 minutes. 15, 15 minutes left. Yeah. Just enough time to do the head. shaping up nicely so we've got well let's do the head now whilst we're on a roll head I've got a hole both sides okay because we're going to join on to the body and we're also going to join on to the hat okay so both sides so again we'll go with the friction drive because we've got those holes in there already single pointed center on the tail stock All 
on it. Same speed, around between 1800 and 2000 will be fine for this. Again, it's a bit big, so I'll start with a rough and gouge. All of these blanks started the same size in terms of the body, the head and the hat, body, head and hat. And of course we've got to make the face the same diameter as that little chamfer, or the top of the chamfer, that we put on the body. So we're going to test it again. So let me just clean up the edges. Um, someone says that they've just found the plans, no feet on the plans. Are you doing a new version? with the feet in them. No, no, I'm not doing a new version. Um, the feet, I'll measure them for you. So get a pen and paper. A minute. The feet, in terms of dimension, are 45 millimetres long and 25 mil wide. Okay, so I've just created a little block, 25 Right, this is actually 50, but it's about 45 finished. All right. There we are. Let's, so that side's cleaned up. I'm just going to flip him over. Just because I'm right-handed, I find it a little bit easier working that right-hand side. Flip him over. We're going to clean up the other side, get away, get rid of those saw cuts. Then we're going to test it for, for fit. Let's have a check, see if it fits, and then I'll tidy it up. So what I mean by fitting is it has to fit on there. Now at the moment there's overhang. Okay, so this is a bit big. Let's turn them over and see that other side. Oh, that's not bad actually. Oh. Um, where can you find the plans? Tell them everybody. They're on there, some, they're on Facebook, aren't they? So we're tidying up now, and I'm gonna just size the other end down a bit. This is one of the only bits that actually isn't painted. I like to leave this wood and then paint the um, facial features on the timber. The first nutcracker I ever made, I made the big mistake of painting the face white and it looked like a bit of a zombie really. Um, very unnatural looking. Probably fitting for the time of year. There we are, that's fitting nicely now. Look, that's got it. So we'll put that together. And I think, how much time have we got, Charlie? We got 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes? Let's make the hat, we might as well, we've got time. A little bit more time and effort into something on Tuesday then as well. So remember, if we're making a solid one, only need a single point in there. Whilst we've got him up there, let's put another dowel in ready to take the hat in a minute. Um, can you remember last week when you were doing the houses, were the measurements 30 by 80 millimetres? Um, 40, 45 rings the bell. Let me, I've got one of the blanks. Let me just tell oh. you. Two seconds. And are all the body parts the same wood? 
all the body parts of tulip in this case. Uh, 40 mil by 80 mil for the houses last week. Right, we're going to do a hat. We're going to do a hat with a with a um, peak. So these are the peaks. This is particular one's my template, but that's made out of a little bit of ply. What I have got is a bit of cedar. Okay, and I won't make this. Well, we'll do the template next week. Let's just carry on turning for now, though. But all I would do with the template is just scribe around it. Take that to my bandsaw roughly cut around it like I've done with this one here and then back to the sanding disc I'll do this for you on Tuesday back to the sanding disc and sand up to my line and then just tidy up that's going to be the peak okay the peak of the hat as shown just here let's get on and make the actual top of the hat though this bit we'll do that now we've got a, a, a little window of time Eight minutes. Eight minutes. That looks like a hat. I'm just going to drill the hat. I'm only going to drill one end, remember? So I'm going to drill this end here ready to go into the top of the head. And then there'll be a hole right the way through the peak that's going to join everything together. So just do one quick hole. Did you say eight minutes? John? Yeah. Dead, dead simple. And I'm going to swap out my light pull drive. It's quite a big bit of timber, that one. So I'm going to go back to back to the um, Pro Drive. And then I'm going to sand the top of the, um, the hat. So we're not going to worry too much about that mark. I'm going to clean up to it. Sand it away on the disc sander. We'll wait till Tuesday. I want you to see every part of this. But at least I can get the turning done. Uh, someone has the AT200 SRG slow running grinder. Yep. Do you know what jig they should be getting? Well, I would go with one of either the Woodcut um, True Grind or the BGK400 from Tormek. That both of those jigs, in my opinion, are the best out there and they will do all of your um, turning tools or all of your conventional turning tools just a little disclaimer in there because there's a lot of weird and wonderful tools out there at the moment this is a really simple shape down to a cylinder do you have any brothers who actually turn? I don't have a brother that turns. I have a brother, I, he doesn't turn. Um, but he's really good with his hands. Kitchen fitter, bathroom fitter, plumber. There we are, let's just clean this up. Five minutes. Tidy at the bottom. Come down a little bit lower. Tidy at the top. That last little bit there, we're gonna, we're gonna sand that away. Or you can put a smaller center in, take, take a little bit more away with that if you want to. Um, but it's easy, you know what, our sanding this. We're going to look at them um, in great detail on Tuesday because we're going to have an awful lot of sanding to do. But let's have a look now. So 
I'm not going to do anything until I see you again on Tuesday. So all of these bits will be tidied up then. Um, but there's the top of the hat. So let's get him on. Just quickly, uh, do you have the specs for the smaller nutcracker? Smaller nutcracker. This, so the spec that you've got there is for the smaller versions. The big one, high meat, is just scaled up. I'll make a peek for you on Tuesday, so. Don't worry that uh, I've used one that I've already got. But there we are, that's, at the moment, that's our main body. We haven't got to the hand, the arms yet. Don't worry about that, we're gonna do that on Tuesday. Um, get yourself to that point. I mean, if you wanna go further, you've got the dimensions there. Get yourself to that point. So don't forget the sand. I've done no sanding on any of this at the moment, so that needs to be done. The feet need to be tidied up, the base needs to be sanded, everything needs to be sanded, yep. But there we are, that's our start. Some people will argue that once you've turned the, the nutcracker, that's where the work really begins. The decorating is everything after that. But have a go at that, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to see you on Tuesday. We're going to finish our nutcracker, hopefully, um, before we start our next learning. So have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your turning. Join me on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.